Hello everyone, this is Harsh and you are watching WPF World. In this video, we are going to learn how to register the user and how to log in with that registered user. And here I will use SQL Server. Okay, before we start, I would say if you need any new feature in this inventory management system, you can write a comment so that I will try to implement that feature as well. Okay, now without wasting the time, let's get started. Before I will start, I will show you the dependency what I have used in this project. To connect SQL Server, I have used Entity Framework Code here. So first you have to install this Entity Framework Code, Entity Framework Code SQL server and then entity framework code dot tools these three nuget package you have to install okay now we will see the view okay this is our register view here we have text block to show the roles and the combo box to select the role okay for the user we have the text box okay and for password and confirm password we have password box okay and here i have binded the property for the role combo box item source two roles this property i have defined in the register view mode okay you can see username password confirm password selected role and this roles okay this we have binded in the UI. Okay. And for the register button, we have the register command. Now we will see here role is type of observable collection of type user role. And here we are getting this user role, which is enum. You can see here user and admin. Two values are there for now. Okay. And this is register command. So here I have used prism command okay if you don't know what is prism how to use delegate command from the prism you can watch my prism 8 tutorial playlist so here i have created the object for register command and here i am passing two method here like on register and can register means this will tell if user will able to register or not okay this method will do the registration okay and here i have defined observe property like if this property is changed then it will call this can register method and it will validate we have the validation here like if it is not null not empty and password and confirm password is same then only enable this register button okay this is part of binding now we will see how we can store data to the sql server database for that i have used repository pattern and here i have created one interface i user repository okay here we have three methods one is add user async, user exists as async, is authorized user async, okay. For this interface, we implementation class which is user repository and here I have implemented this i user repository. This I will show later, okay. So here I have these three method implementation, okay. Now I will show this app db context. What is this? So I will go here and you can see this app db context inherit from db context and this I have created the property of type db set and it will take the user which is our model like table name will be user and it will have this field we can see here id username password and role okay so once db will create we will have the table with user okay and here in the constructor we are passing this options db context option of type app db context and here we are calling the db context constructor with this option okay and now we have to override one method called on model creating and here we are mapping this like here we are telling database to make it primary key okay and here we have specify is required means username should not be empty or null okay this three field we have specify this required property and this is the has key means this will be our primary key for our database okay and then we have to create one factory class which will implement i design time db context factory of type this db context okay why we have created if you will not create then we will get the error if we try to create the database here we have one method create db context okay inside that we are creating the object of db context option builder of type app db context and then we are calling this use sql server and passing the connection string this connection string we are taking from the app.config file and then we are returning the app db context with this options okay so now we'll see the app.config file so here we have we define this connection string and the name is default connection which we are using here right then the connection string means it will take the value of this default connection and this connection string okay this will take the value from here okay now i think it is clear okay now we'll go to register view model here i pass this means i am using constructor injection okay so here we have defined one field this one and assign this to this injected object okay and now we'll go to 
register method and here we are checking user repository dot user exist means from this if you see this fdb context for add user async we are passing the user model and here using the context means fdb context we are getting this users and then in this table we will add the user okay and then we will save the data same way we have any async means we are checking if there is any user with this username and this password then we will say this user is authorized and for user existence we are checking if that username is equal to this user this is the implementation of this methods okay so here we are checking if user already exists then we will show the message like username already already exists here we are using direct dialog coordinator dot instance dot show message async this class is from may have metro okay if you can see here if you mouse over here you can see may have metro the control dialogs to use this we have to register this coordinator we have to use this dialog participation dot register and we have to bind it like this if you don't mind then you will get the exception here okay that's why if we are using this thing dialog coordinator instance dot so message async then we have to register it here okay now i think this is clear like how we can use the dialog of the may have metro here we are creating the user object and we are passing the value what we have in the UI and then we will call add user async means it will save the data to the database and we will show the message like registration successful and then we will come to the login page after registration so we are setting the windows service title to login this is navigation to the login window okay now before we run the application we have to create the database how to create that we have to go to package manager console and here we have to run some command what are those command we have add migration okay and then i will say initial create and then press enter okay it will take some time before that we will see here we don't have any database here you can see inside the database we don't have any database in the sql server management studio okay now we have to run the command update database okay what is wrong here let's see the term update is not recognized okay we have to use like this update hyphen database now this is done and you can see one class is created here initial create and this is inherited from migration okay now we can see here in the sql server we can replace it and go to databases and you can see this user db from where it came you can see in the app.config and here we have specified database user db so it created user db database okay now we'll see here what are inside this we can go to table and we can see this db o dot users this is how we have created the database now we'll try to register one user okay let's run it if you observe i passed this user repository to the registration view model so to use this we have to first register to our ioc container how we can register you can see i have registered this you can see this user repository user i user repository and user repository okay and this is not required so i can delete this and this is the app db context registration like this class then only we can use our db context okay so here we are creating the object of this builder and setting this we are calling this user sql server and the option and returning this so it will register our app db context so that we can use it okay from here if you see we can use it because we registered it in this way in our container okay so now let's run now i will register i will click on register here so it will come to our registration page now i will first select admin and here i will say admin admin and admin this i will tell you why i have this why i have added this role okay now i will click on register okay now you can see this dialog this is this dialog is from may have okay you can see success registration successful now once we click on okay then it will come to login page this is login title and this page now i will try to login because i have registered this user so i will use this user admin admin okay and then i will click on login you can see we are able to access this inventory management okay so this is how we can register the user in the sql server database now i will show you login part so first let's go to the login view okay in last video how i have created this ui okay so here for this registered here we have the command for preview mouse down because it is 
text block so we cannot bind the command directly so here i will use interaction trigger where we can get this interaction for that we have to use this behaviors okay so we have to add this namespace then only we can able to access interaction trigger okay here we are specifying event trigger and here we are setting the event name like for which event we want to bind the command and then in the invoke command action we will bind the command so that once we click on this text block then we will able to run this command okay now let's go to login view so you can see here this i have binded with register command okay so you see this register command then we have this show register window so it will set the title and then it will navigate to the register view okay and we have the button login for that i directly binded the command login command okay command with login command so we can see the implementation here can execute method we can see here here we can see not null and empty then only it will enable and also from the username and password setter we are calling raise can execute change so that whenever this value will change then this method will execute okay now we'll see execute login command so here we are validating the username and password so here we are checking if user exists or not okay if user exists then we'll set the title as inventory management and this i have set it for the window like windows state should be maximized and can be resize and max restore button should be visible that i have binded in the ui of the main window you can see here these are the binding okay and the title okay this i have binded here so it will update the value of this thing okay then navigate to the home okay so whenever we log in then only we can able to access the inventory management system i hope you understand how to register the user and how to log in with the registered user if you found this video helpful let's share with your friends